1984, composer Elizabeth Alexander was a college student visiting a small church service held in a barn. She listened to a soft-spoken layperson give a thoughtful meditation entitled, Cherish Your Doubts. And she never forgot it. She wondered if it would be possible for a gospel choir to sing about the spiritual journey of doubt, even as it affirms the awesome power of faith. She wondered this for years, and then in 2004, she wrote this next piece, and in 2005, she added the soulful opening solo, which Jillian will sing today. Cherish your doubt. Cherish, cherish your doubt. Cherish your doubt, don't throw it out. That's what true belief is about. And this song is called Trust the Seeds. And when the composer wrote it, she was remembering that her parents, her mother used to say how her parents used to talk and dream about what their four children's futures might be like. But those kids turned out to be really different, very different than they had imagined. Even more wonderful, though more wonderful than what their parents could dream up. So this song that the choir is about to sing is about trusting seeds. And after to fill your heart with wonder, some only after you are gone, you must give them freedom, freedom. Open hearts, we become a living sanctuary. We are each holy and loved right through. When we seek quiet and open our hearts, we are more aware that in us, among us, between us, is a source of both radiance and reason. Let us remain open to this source, always there when we need it. Radiance, reason, love. Amen.
Our next piece is called Where There is Light in the Soul. It's based on a Chinese proverb, which goes like this. Where there is light in the soul, there will be beauty in the person. Where there is beauty in the person, there will be harmony in the home. Where there is harmony in the home, there will be honor in the nation. Where there is honor in the nation, there will be peace in the world. A more general version of this is a reading in our hymnal. It's translated with just the word peace throughout. Where there is peace in the soul, then there is peace in the home and outward to peace in the nation. In Taoist texts, the word peace has been translated also as virtue. Not the usual way we think of virtue, huh? But virtue as it might mean living the path of good and of light. When there is virtue in yourself and your family, then there is virtue in the home and in the nation, even the universe. But how can these concepts like light, beauty, harmony, honor, peace, virtue, how can they be so connected? Western people tend to want to define and explain and separate rather than see the wholeness in things. Of course, two seeming opposites must be in conflict. But what if they could play against and even work with each other? What if we more often saw circles instead of lines? Unitarian minister Douglas Taylor suggests that the true inner peace is based on love and compassion. And these are interpersonal, relational emotions, not just inside. Anger, fear, attachment to things, these are all self-focused emotions. Practicing love and compassion, starting with ourselves, creates more love and compassion for the world and it cultivates our sense of universal responsibility. This then leads us back to more love and compassion and more inner peace and happiness. As Thich Nhat Hanh said in his 1987 book, Being Peace, many people involved in the peace movement can write very good protest letters but they're not yet able to write a love letter. Anger may seem to be motivating, but it can crowd out compassion and love. So we can notice and even feel our anger, and then we can just step out of the way. Peace is in every step. Every thing is a love letter. Compassion and forgiveness is what breaks the cycle of injustice, inequality, and violence. Peace, then, can only begin within ourselves.
Go out. Go out into the highways and byways and give the people something of your new vision. Uncover your light and let it shine. Give them not hell, but give them hope. Forgot the peas do that. And give them courage and preach the kindness and the everlasting love of God.